Hey guys, and welcome to the next part. So in this part we're going to have some enemies, so we can have some actual gameplay, but we're not going to start with a humanoid, as a humanoid requires behavior trees and um, animation, and we will get to that, but we're going to start with something a bit simpler, so we're going to start with a drum. So right click in our character folder, make a new blueprint class, make a character, and we'll call it BP Base Drone. We're going to load him up, and we're going to add a static mesh, and we'll just connect this to mesh just so it's there. And uh, off static mesh, we will search for drone and get O2. And we'll just rotate this guy negative 90 on the yaw so that he's facing forward. So we'll compile and save that. We'll also make him 0.5 for the size. And we'll select the capsule and make the capsule 34 by 34. That way it's a bit smaller. So now we'll go to the character movement. We'll change his default land movement mode from walking to flying. We'll scroll down, search for max fly speed and get 500 for the flex speed and 200 for the deceleration. Now we want to control the rotation ourselves, so in the class defaults, turn off use controller rotation yaw. Compile and save. Now we'll go to the event graph and we're going to make some basic AI here. So we'll start by adding a pawn sensing component. And it can only sense players. You can turn this off if you want to be able to detect NPCs and you can change the peripheral vision and the distance and all that. We'll start with just him able to detect a pawn. So on C pawn, cast this to first person character and then promote this to a variable and we'll name it target. Now we want to hold control and drag this here and convert this to a validated get. So if we don't have a target, we will add a new target. Now if we have a target, convert to a validated to get, we want to basically move towards it and then if we're in range attack it and strafe so we will get distance to off the target we'll hold control and drag it down to other actor here so we get our distance from self to the other actor and we will do greater than and check if this is greater than a new variable we'll make which is attack distance compile and save so We'll make a branch by holding B and clicking, connecting this. So if we're further away than our attack distance, we will set actor location and rotation. Uh, sorry, excuse me. Add movement input. And uh, the movement will be, uh, we'll get actor location off our target. We'll control C, control V, and then look at, find look at rotation from ourselves to our target. And we're going to connect this here, but we're going to disconnect that and split this. And we're just going to get the yaw. And we're going to add 100 to the z axis um, for the location, just so he looks a bit above and he doesn't look down as he moves forward. It'll make him look cooler, I think. Okay, so movement input one, that's fine, I guess. We can mess with that, but uh, we'll also set actor rotation. And we need to get actor rotation. And we will lerp this. And we'll make the alpha 0.1 and shortest path. And then we want, we'll just split this, we'll just connect this here. All right, so that should be good. This will make a move towards the player, but what happens when he's in range of the player? We want to do a few things. When we're in range of the player, we basically don't want to move forward exactly, but we do want to strafe. So we're going to get world direction. We're going to, um, again, get the look at rotation. All right. We're going to control C, control V this, and we'll just make another one. Whoops. But we're going to recombine this to get the rotation. And we're going to get right vector. And then off this, we're going to multiply this by a float. And we'll make it 0.5, um, sorry. Drag off the float and select. Select float. We'll drag off the variable and we'll do strafe right. 
So if it's A, we'll do 0.5. If it's B, we'll do negative 0.5. So this will make them strafe left and right. And we might need to lerp this a bit. Um, we'll do we'll do 0.2. So it's mainly that, but we'll also just get the lookout rotation. So he moves a little bit towards the player. And sorry, we want to connect this to the scale value. Get rid of this. Just connect that back there. Yeah, connect that to the scale. Okay, so that should make him strafe the player, but let's make it so that he um, changes strafing. So on begin play, we'll call a custom event, and the custom event will be called change strafe direction. And we can make this um, set here. We'll make a flip flop. We'll just connect these, connect that. So this will change the direction. And then we'll do timer by event. And we will do random float in range. And we'll make it 2 to 6, 5, I guess. And we don't want that to loop. We'll just connect this here. And on begin play, we will change strafe direction. So that'll make him change strafing direction. Next, we'll want to make him shoot at the player. But uh, let's see if we get this working so far. So we'll drag him into the world. And we'll drag him up, and we'll see what he does. So he's detecting us, so he's moving towards us. And right, so we're going to get rid of the slurp. Just connect the right vector here. And we're going to slow him down a bit. So character movement, we'll make it 350 by 200. And we'll make the, uh, do we have an attack distance? We didn't set the attack distance, so we'll make that 1250. So it might need to undo the changes, but we'll see. So as you can see, he's kind of going around. He's not looking at the player when he's rotating, though. So we need to set the active rotation when he's in range of the player. So we'll just copy this lerp. But we will recombine this, and we will again drag this over here so that he gets the look at. Actually, no. We want to connect get actor location, not without, without the height. So it looks at him without the height. So just to show what this is, is we have when we're moving towards the player, we add the height. When we're moving, when we're looking at the player, we don't. And we'll see how this looks. So he's kind of looking at the player, he's strafing around. If we run away, he should chase us. And then he rotates again. All right, so let's make it so we can actually shoot at the player. File, save all. So we're gonna make a new custom event. And it will be called fire projectile. And we're going to go in here, we're gonna add an arrow. And we'll just drag this in front of the gun. And we'll rename this muzzle. We'll connect it to the mesh. All right, so fire projectile, we will get muzzle, get transform, spawn actor from class, and we will get projectile, first person projectile. And the damage can be 10. We don't think we have health on the player yet, so we'll have to add that after this, but we'll uh, start with this for now. Compile, save. Okay, so now, if we're within range of the player, we want to... Uh, we can use a variable. Can attack. So if can attack is false, Set it to true. Actually, I'm thinking, hmm. You know what we could do? We could do something fancy with his aiming. 
Like we could just make him shoot periodically, but we could also make him look at a location and then kind of telegraph it. And that might be kind of cool. So I think we're going to do that. We'll start with just making him shoot actually. Hmm. So yeah, we'll go back to this. So can attack if it's true. So can attack to false. Add a delay. And that'll be the attack speed. So we'll make it 0.5. And then set can attack back to true. And then fire projectile. So if we're in range and we can attack, we'll set it to false. And then fire projectile. And then after 0.5 seconds, set it back to true. So he fires again. So it can attack to true. Compile and save. So this should make him shoot at us. He fired once, but he... Attack. Oops. Wrong thing. Can attack. Okay, so let's see what this does. So he's shooting at us. It's not the uh, best thing in the world, but it's it's working. So what we can do is instead of getting the actor location of the target, well, we could get the player location. Eh, we'll just add some height, just so it looks a bit better. So we'll add 44. I think that'll be a bit better. I think that's better. All right, that's not bad. So we have a drone. So we need a health system, but perhaps we should do that in the next video. So we have a drone now, uh, but we should add just killing him. So we'll go into there. And you know what? We're just going to copy the code from our character. We're literally just going to copy it and paste it. And we're going to refresh this. We can get rid of the bone check for this. And we can get rid of the headshot input because we don't need that. And this is actually pretty much, we want to change mesh to static mesh. <coughs> and put this here. And we can get rid of this. And we can do set lifespan and set it to 10 and would uh, create a variable health and we'll make it 100 and I'm also gonna make him move a bit closer to the player we'll make it 1000 distance so compile save I'll save all and we'll load this up so we shoot at the player and we should be able to shoot him I'll just pick up the better gun so I can kill him faster All right, there's some error. Uh, get socket neck. Right, get rid of the attach point and change this to static mesh. Location type: snap to target, including scale. Scale one one one, and that should be better, I think. Sometimes when you drag it into a over another variable, it doesn't work, so just drag that back in there. So we'll load this up. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, it's because it's colliding with itself. <coughs> I believe. Simulate. We'll make it a physics actor. And the capsule pawn. It might be the character movement. We'll turn off enable physics interaction. And we'll go into here, we'll make it custom, and we'll turn off physics body. And I think that should fix it up.
He's still kind of rotating like crazy. It's because he's a sphere. That's why. I'm sorry. That was dumb. So we're going to select him. We're going to go to the mesh. We're going to open it up. And we're going to just hit apply. And that'll make the collision better. So we're going to go to the base drone. Capsule component. And turn off colliding with projectile for the capsule. We just want it on the, uh, the actual body. And uh, I think we need to go to the the um, first person character blueprints projectile. Did we make this only projectile? Yes, we did. Okay, so forget that. So file save all. So now if we go in, and our drone doesn't see us because of the peripheral vision, so we'll move in front of him. And now it should look better. There we go, that's better. He's still kind of shooting though. So we'll go into here. And we will do on death. Um, we'll just make a new bool. Alive. Compile, save. And we will set it to false. Now we're doing some, some uh, bad practice here. We're using tick. We're doing some we're doing some not great practice. So this is just to get a quick and dirty AI up and uh, in the next uh, AIs we'll uh, we'll use behavior trees and we'll do things more properly. But if alive is true, then we do this. Otherwise uh, we don't want to do anything. So let's play now. Let's kill our drone. And he's not firing anymore, so this is good. We can still shoot him around. Alright, so I think that'll be it for that video. It should cover quite a bit. So thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next video where we'll cover, uh, I think, health for the player so the drone can kill us. And then maybe we'll change our spawning system up a bit. I think we're going to do like Borderlands, where we have a specific spawn point. And we'll just move that in our levels. So maybe we'll set the spawn point like over here. And we always spawn here and kind of have a, a small level. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.